for joining us on board the flight to hell. In the likely event of a catastrophe, emergency exits are located at the front and rear of the plane. Your other options include suicide or simply falling asleep. Our pilot this evening is Matteo Leon. Good evening, everybody. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, too much coffee and candy bars. The flight to Papua New Guinea is approximately 15 miserable fucking hours. By hour six, Matteo will be burning himself with cigarettes to stay awake. Fuck! And by the eighth hour, the pilot and both his passengers will all be hallucinating. Dave? Katie? You left me to die! If you need any assistance during your flight, I don't exist, so you can go fuck yourselves. Thanks again for flying with us this evening. Your chances of survival are slim to none, so sit back and relax and abandon all hope. Q-Code and Wood Elf present The Edge of Sleep. Starring Mark Fishbach. Created by Jake Emanuel and Willie Bloss. We've been in the air for 13 hours. The urge to sleep was constant. It felt stronger than gravity. We were fighting it off with every breath. Two hours left. That's all we had. Just two more hours. But it felt impossible. Like eating a brick of concrete. Or swimming in a volcano. Or walking a circus tightrope after ten shots of tequila. See the incredible Shit-faced Stromboli as he attempts to walk the tightrope after drinking five margaritas. What? Hmm? What did you just say? You're talking about tequila? Am I speaking out loud? Or is this in my head? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? You're not making any sense. Dave. Never mind. Hey, fuckos, this is your captain speaking. You still alive back there? Yeah. Good. How you doing? Oh, I feel fucking great. I could stay awake for another week, maybe even a month. Fuck it. I don't think I need to sleep again. Hey, Dave. 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 No. Mateo's asking for you. What? Why cut this whale meet us in Fiji, man? <laughs> Dave? What if the whale isn't real? It's real. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe you're going to die. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Maybe you can join us. Dave! <laughs> What the fuck? Why'd you hit me? You're talking to yourself. Get up. Here. Drink this water. All of it. Smoke this. No. It'll make me sick. Just shut the fuck up and smoke. I guarantee this is the only time you'll ever hear a medical professional tell you to do that. I'm gonna go check on Mateo. Keep smoking. Drink another bottle. Okay. What's up? How you doing? You know... <laughs> Jesus Christ, it smells like shit up here. What did you do? I, I can't smell anything. I probably need a shower. Dave is hallucinating. He's starting to micro-sleep. It's causing him to black out for five to ten seconds. Fuck. He's talking to himself, and he's unresponsive at times. I don't care if he's blabbering like a baby and shitting his pants. Just keep him awake. Staple his eyelids open if you have to. What's that on your arm? Nothing. Let me see. Oh, fucking hell. 
I'm doing what I have to do. Do you have a knife? Yeah. Cut yourself. Small incisions. And pour hydrogen peroxide on top. It'll hurt more, but it'll scar less. Don't use a cigarette. You sure you're okay? Don't worry about me. I'm getting us a new guinea. Just go take care of Dave. David. Yeah? You're hallucinating. I know. When you're this sleep deprived, you can dream while you're awake. Your brain shuts down unwillingly and drifts in and out of consciousness. <laughs> I'm sorry. What the hell for? Oh. I'm starting to think this might not turn out the way we want it to. Buddy, that's life. Look at my watch. Do you see what that says? Uh, I can't read it. It's blurry. I set a timer. An hour and 45 minutes. That's what we have left. So that's what you owe me. That's what you owe to Mateo, and that's what you owe to Katie. She wanted you to make it all the way, and that's exactly what you're going to do. What if we get there? We find... Nothing. I already know we aren't going to find shit. But I want to see the stupid look on your face right before you die. <laughs> <laughs> Can you read what my timer says now? An hour and 43 minutes. We've got this. Okay. okay. I can make it. In 25 minutes. Keep those fucking eyes open. An hour and 13 minutes. One hour left. Yeah. 48. Come on. 36 minutes. Half an hour. 25 minutes. 15. I see the island. 10 minutes left. We're approaching the airfield. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. What the fuck? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh, that didn't sound good. I'll go check on him. What's up? The runway isn't clear. Look, some stupid fuck parked the refueler on the tarmac. So what do we do? We gotta butter the plane. What? I have to Captain Sully this shit. We're landing on the ocean. Can you do that? I hope so. But it's possible, right? We're about to fucking find out. Okay, so if we gotta do it, let's just fucking do it. Follow my instructions over the PA system. What's going on? Slight change of plans. Okay, people, time to water ditch. I hope you can swim. What? Runway's blocked. We're landing in the water. Fuck. Yep. Make sure all the cargo is stowed. Anything loose is gonna go flying. Your life jacket should be under your seats. Here. Thanks. When the plane starts to land, keep your heads between your knees. If the cabin is flooded, you run right for the exit. Okay. Here we go. Sit down and buckle up. Jesus. Starting to descend. <laughs> Opening emergency doors. Brace for impact. Uh, Look! Hey! 
Over here! Take my hand, miss. A young man pulled Linda on board a speedboat. Then he reached over and helped me up. Is there anybody else? Linda and I looked down at the plane. It had already sunk to the ocean floor. No. Just us. As we left the crash, I stared out at the surface of the water. But there was nothing. Mateo was gone. Thanks, bud. As we headed for shore, the man who rescued us passed me a plastic water bottle. Inside was murky gray liquid that looked like dirty sink water. Drink, please! What is it? Wagi! Jungle tea! It will give you strength! I uncapped the bottle and took a sip. Ooh. Hey, you have to drink this. You sure? Trust me. Okay. It tasted as bad as it looked. Bitter and earthy. But as the liquid hit our stomachs, we suddenly felt restored. This shit was more powerful than all the energy drinks and cigarettes we had on the plane. Excuse me, sir. What's your name? Felix. I'm Dave. Linda. Where are you from? California. Hello, Dave and Linda from California. Welcome to Papua. When we got to shore, we walked through the harbor. It was empty. Wiped clean like the rest of the world. Felix, how did you know where to find us? My dad. He knew you were coming. He wants to meet you. Felix led us to a beat-up pickup truck. Hey, Pop! As an old man stepped out of the car, I recognized him immediately. Katie and Mateo had died, and we had traveled halfway around the world on the small chance this man was real. And here he was, in the flesh, standing right before us. Daddy, this is Linda and Dave from California. I dreamed of you. Yes. You are the whale. Did you bring what I asked for? I reached into my pocket and pulled out a pack of cigarettes. But they were completely soaked through. Oh. I'm sorry. Hmm. This is not a good start. The tea will wear off soon. You will grow tired. Come along, city boy. Long drive now. Where are we going? A place for sleep. We rode in the front of the truck with Felix and Robbie. In under five minutes, we were deep in the jungle. The landscape was beautiful. We drove up a windy dirt road that overlooked a lush tropical valley. Something connected us to this land. Some unknown force that brought us here in the midst of a catastrophe. There were so many questions. Why were we here? What had linked us to these men from the other side of the world? Do you know why this is happening? A crack at the heart of the world. Spirits come through. They are hungry, greedy. They see, and they take. What are these spirits? I cannot say their name. It is a cursed word. But where do they come from? Another place. A close, far place. You have eyes, but you cannot see it. You have ears, but you cannot hear it. You can only walk there in your sleep. 
I'm sorry, this is all very interesting, but Dave and I have been awake for 72 hours, so the only question that I have is when the fuck do we sleep? Not yet. First, we must reach the Morandi. The what? They're my dad's tribe. People love the jungle. They'll protect us. How? They are sleepwalkers. I don't understand. Dream warriors, miss. They will keep us safe. Okay, fine. Great. How long until we reach them? An hour? An hour and a half. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't think we can make it. You must. My heart began to sink. Even if Robbie's tribe could protect us, there was no way I'd reach him in time. Dave? The jungle tea was wearing off. <sighs> Stay with us. Can't go to sleep, Dave. Hang in there. I'm okay. I'm... I'm okay. Dave. I was drifting. Hey, hey! You okay, buddy? Get him some water. I couldn't fight it any longer. Eyes open. Come on. I couldn't feel them as they shook me. Dave! They sounded miles away. And then... They were gone. Dave. Dave. Shit! Wake him up! I can't! He's collapsed from exhaustion. Drive, boy! Faster! I'm driving! How far are we from the tribe? Close enough. Can we help him? What can we do? Nothing. He must face the spirits alone. Hello? I was alone. Can anyone hear me? In a dark place. Help! You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. I reached for the walls and felt for a door. Some way out of this place. But there was nothing. Let me out! <laughs> I was in some sort of pit, trapped at the bottom of the world. An hour passed, then a day, then a week. Let me out! I couldn't take it any longer. Please! I had to get out, one way or another. I tried bashing my brains in, but the wall turned soft like a sponge. I tried biting my tongue off, but my teeth became jelly. I tried ending in all a hundred different ways, but there was no way out. I was trapped here forever. And then slowly, very slowly, I began to forget. Little things at first. The color green. The color of money. And the jungle and grass. It turned gray in my mind. Dogs. Furry. Droopy ears. Tails wagging. I could no longer picture them. My friends' faces grew blurry. How you doing, man? Their voices started to fade. Nice to meet you, dude. I'm Lando. All that I was, was being chipped away. One memory at a time. I didn't want to forget. I had to hold on. Just one face. That's all I want. To remember, please. Let me keep one smile. Her name was Katie. Her name was Katie. Don't forget her. Don't forget her. Her name was Katie. Her name was Katie. Don't forget her. She had a laugh. Her name was Katie. Katie. Don't she had a 
smile. She loved you. She loved you. What's my name? I had forgotten who I was. And all that was left was loneliness. A door appeared in the wall of the pit. Hi, Dave. A face. I knew this face. Do you remember me? Yes. Your name is Katie. Yes. And my name is David. That's right. As I looked in her eyes, I began to remember. Memories fell into place like pieces of a puzzle. I remembered the way she used to laugh. Do you like it? Be honest. I remembered how shitty her cooking was. <laughs> well, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> I remembered the first time I made her cry. Hey, Katie, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm an asshole. Like, I, uh, you know that I love you. I'm really sorry, okay? <laughs> And I remembered that she was gone. Katie! But... What? How are you here? We left you. That doesn't matter. We can erase that part. All you have to do is step through the door. It's okay. Just take my hand. Please, Dave, come, come with me. When she looked up at me again, little black triangles appeared in her eyes. Let's go back. No. No. Katie's gone. You took her. The walls of the pit began to shake. David! Fuck you. Water burst through the cracks in the wall. As water filled the room, the nightmare's face shifted a hundred times. I saw an elephant, my parents, and everything I've ever feared flash before my eyes. Looking directly at the creature made my scars burn. It was the pain of everything it took from me, and everything I'd lost. Get out of my head! The pain was washed away with a great flood. As I stood at the bottom of the ocean, I watched them swim above me. It was a pod of a dozen whales. climbed onto one of their backs, and they swam for the surface, leading me into the light. Okay. Breathe. Slow. Slowly. Where are we? We're here. You're safe. I was so weak that Linda and Felix had to help me sit up. We were somewhere in the jungle, far off the road. As I caught my breath, I looked over to Robbie. I saw whales. A dozen of them. No. You saw sleepwalkers. The Morandi. 
Robbie pointed to the trees. Two Mirandi tribesmen stood in the moonlight. They looked like they were part of the jungle, a people that time forgot. They say they've been waiting for you. They have seen you in their dreams. The Mirandi carried me through the trees. Motu, Busano. The village is up ahead. It was a small cluster of wooden shelters that sat on the bank of a river. It was a place untouched by the modern world. No one could say how long they lived here, and yet they had survived while billions died. Deep in the jungle, they had developed the ability to control their dreams, a strange power that kept them safe. Tonight you sleep. Tomorrow you become Morandi. Learn our ways. Will we dream tonight? No. There will just be silence. Robbie and Felix left our side, and the Morandi carried me to where we'd be sleeping. As we approached the shelter, Linda took my arm. Hey. There's something I need to tell you. What's up? I was checking your vital signs while you were sleeping, and I... Notice something. Doesn't make any sense. Huh? Scars on your chest are gone. As I ran my hand across my chest, I realized she was right. The scars that covered my body had completely vanished. What do you think it means? I think that's a question for tomorrow. Sit, Aina. We entered a shelter where a dozen Mirandi were sleeping on the ground. Good night. Sweet dreams. The Mirandi lay me down on an open space in the floor. As my eyes adjusted to the dark, I saw that I was lying next to a little girl. She must have been seven or eight, one of the younger members of the tribe. I must have seemed strange to her because she stared at me and laughed. As I lay there, in the heart of the jungle, thousands of miles away from home, I closed my eyes, and for the first time in many nights, I sank into a deep and peaceful sleep. Edge of Sleep stars Mark Fishbach as Dave, Victor Rasuk as Mateo, Kara Santana as Linda, Alex Esso as Katie, Michael Yama as the old man, and Colin Lim as Felix. Additional performances by Julia Henning and James Wellington. Written by Jake Emanuel and Willie Block. Directed by by Jake Emanuel. Produced by Q Code, Daylight Media, and Mark Fishbach. Recorded, mixed, and mastered by Salt Audio. Original music and score by Jamie Sheffman and Noah Gersh for Salt Audio. Sound design by Maria Mora and Juan David Chaparro Perez for Audio for Media. Edited by Zach Jurich. Associate Producer, Tess Ryan. Script Supervisor, Sam Beasley. Production Support, provided by James Gelberg. Casting by Chelsea Block and Marisol Roncalli at Atomic Honey. Art by Matt Taylor and Aaron Salazar. 
Special thanks to Jeff Roy, Mark Holden, Kirsty Jan Verdal, and Celeste Armstrong. The Edge of Sleep is a Q-Code production. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to The Edge of Sleep on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your favorite audio dramas. You can also visit our merch store at qcodemedia.com slash the edge of sleep.